Welcome to the 3C Live Experience, a dynamic, multiracial, fast-growing church with thousands of believers filled with passion for God and for people. Let's join 3C in this live experience. And are you ready for the Word? Yes. Amen. 3rd of September, I ministered a word called Love to Love. And I haven't been able to minister since then on a Sunday. So I'm going into part two of that message. Are you ready? Yes. Amen. So that means love to love. love to love. And therefore, we're going to look at the Word and you're going to be challenged by the Word. And just to summarize at what we are looking at was 2 Corinthians chapter four, 5 and verse 14. It says, for the love of Christ compels us. What compels us? What drives you? The love of Christ. What gets you to do what you need to do? The love of Christ. So that's always the question. Is it, are you driven by um, the, 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 the validation of people? The pat on the back. Are you driven by money or survival? Well, I've got good news for you. God has got so much more in store than just that. That is bondage. That's oppression. Hallelujah. The end of the day, God wants you to be free. Amen. And that's why we've got to get to the place where we have been so consumed with the love of God. But it's that love that then compels us. It's that love that then drives us to be able to love others. You can only be able to give when you are perfected and complete, lacking nothing. That's why the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. How many of you came this morning because you want? You see, it's not about wanting. Wanting is a given. God will give you what you need to be able to do that which you need to do. As you seek first the kingdom of God, His righteousness, all these things shall be added unto you. So therefore, God wants to empower you. Somebody that hangs on to what they have, somebody that holds on to what they have, maintenance, survival, that's called a slave. Just check down your road, where the slave sitting in your road. They, okay. No, 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 God hasn't called us to be slaves. That's why we can be generous, so be generous. We can give away because we continually are empowered. We continue to receive. We con uh, continue at that place of being loved. That's why we can love in return. So it's the love of God that compels us. And therefore in verse uh, uh, 16, it says there that therefore from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. The Amplified Version says, we do not regard people from a human point of view, from the natural standards of value. I don't value you based on your income. I don't value you based on what you can do for me. It's amazing how you can be at work and you can be moody. Bump your neighbor and say, uh-oh, it's getting close to home. And then suddenly the one who can potentially give you an increase or a promotion walks into the office and then suddenly you the sunshine itself. <laughs> that mood just goes. Suddenly it's like, oh, hi, hi, how are you doing this morning? And all your colleagues look at you and say, where did this come from? <laughs> Hello. See, when you are complete in love, you can be genuine. And now you love not based on what you can get out of somebody. You love not because of what they have done for you. That's why he says God loved us first. While we were still enemies of God. While we were against God. While we deserved not to be loved. While we were hurting and destroying that which God had created. No, it's then that God loved us. Come on, somebody. And therefore, we don't regard according to human value, according to what you have. No. Now we can love because we're a new creation. All the old things have passed away. Behold, everything has now become new. And that's why he says, and therefore, what has been given to us is a ministry of reconciliation. That is that because I've received love, now I can give love. 
because I've, re, I've, I've been reconciled to God, now I can have the, what does he say? Has been given to us the ministry of reconciliation. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 18. He's given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them. Not holding their sin against them. Oh, let me tell you, we can be so fake. And we can toy toy and demand justice. But when it comes to our mistakes, we want mercy. Ooh. Oh, we want mercy. Are you hearing me yet today? When it comes to me, I want mercy. When it comes to somebody else, I want justice. Wow. Pastor, it's just, it's not, it's not about the, the money. It's, not, it's about the principle. You know, you, you lie. Liar, liar, pants on fire. You're hearing me today. Therefore, he's given us the word of reconciliation. Now, because we have received the love of God, we can continue to love. And I want to take it further today. 1 John 4, verse 7. There's so much the Bible says about this. So I've got so much to say, but I'll continue next week and the week after whatever. We'll continue next week. Verse 7 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God is love. He starts off with the word beloved. That's how he addresses. Look at the lingo. Beloved. Beloved speaks about a special relationship that you have with somebody else. There's a reason why I can say that we're beloved. Some people have a special relationship, but they have a special relationship with themselves. It's called narcissistical <laughs> behavior. It's all about me. When you dream, you're always the biggest in the dream. You see, when God gets hold of you, you can dream beyond yourself. Because you become smaller in your dream. The smaller you become in your dream, the bigger your capacity. The bigger you are in your dream. Have you taken a selfie before? When you take a selfie, the camera, you're closer to the camera. The more you're in the camera, the less you can see the other people. Wow. That's why it's called self E. Are you hearing me? See, the less of you, the more of others. So when you start conquering that and understand, and that's why God has come. He says that you might be free. He wants us to be walk in total freedom. The more you consume with yourself, the less your capacity. And that's why we need a revelation of the love of God within our lives. We need to understand love. We need to know love. We need to know the love of Christ within our lives so that we can live it. So he says, be loved. It says prized, valued. But look at what the verse says. He says, let us love one another. For love is of God. Listen to this. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not know God, he who does not love does not know God, for God is love. You see, love is the divine and perfect love is only given by God. 
And this love is given to those who are of God. In other words, those who are born of God. Everyone who loves is born of God. That, that word born, the Greek word there is the word geneo, which is translated to be begotten. The word geneo, we derive our English word generations from. So generations means a next, a next generation. If we take the Greek geneo, begotten, the word begotten means to be offspring. It means to produce, especially as an effect of an, of an outgrowth or, or an extension. So when we're talking about being born of God, we carry the DNA of Christ. Being born of God, we carry the DNA of God. And what he is saying is God is love. So when you are born of God, you are now an extension. You're born, you're begotten. You're the next generation of love. Is, is this helping somebody? And therefore, carrying that DNA, that is the evidence that you are born again, possessing the life of God, having the capacity to love and experience His love. Now, in contrast to that, uh oh, the one who does not love, the Bible says, does not know God. Those whose lives are not characterized by love for others, the Bible says, therefore they are not Christians. No matter how much you claim you're a child of God, you're born again, God says, no, the evidence of you being born of me, if you begotten, the evidence of begotten of me, God is love, is that you love. Many Christians, like the Pharisees of the day of Jesus, they knew a lot about God, but they did not know God. And we've got many Christians that can quote the Bible. Many Christians that know about the God, about gifts, about prophecy. They know about church. They know about spirituality. They know about religion. But it's not true godliness it's not true spirituality, it's mysticism. Because you come, you prophesy, you speak, so say the Lord, but you stab me in the back. You're for yourself. Your dreams are for you. Everything you want is for you. When you ask God for a car, it's for you. You ask God for a house, oh Lord, give me a big house so they can see I serve a big God. <laughs> like, is God like stupid? God can see right through your narcissist, narcissism. No, you need a big house, why? So that you can help others. That you can use it to bring people, that you can preach the gospel. That, can you, that you can house people amen. that need help. Can I get a big amen there? Yes. That's why you want a car. You need a car. Yeah. So that you can go pick, pick people up, bring them to church. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. You need a car. And, that, and, that, and that's just the thing. God supplies that which you need, but not for your, your, your for, 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 for narcissistic desires and say, well, Lord, help me. And, and, and Lord, I pray that you heal me. I believe in miracles. I apply the blood of Jesus Christ. Why must God heal you? So that you can go on being your selfish self at least. No, 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 I'm not gonna say it. I mean, do you think God is stupid? Why would God do anything for you? But here's the thing, He does. He's merciful, He's gracious, 
He forgives us. He cleanses us. And He helps us. But surely at some other stage you need to get it. And understand that freely I have received. Now I can freely, I can freely give. That's why many Christians, they, do not, they know a lot about God, but they don't really know God, like, like, like Lucifer. The absence of God's love in their lives reveals an unregenerate, obstinate, stubborn condition that is conclusively, that is as conclusive as their weird, erroneous theology, their, their, their interpretation of God, or let me say their misinterpretation. They come up with all kinds of theologies. Why? They don't want to love people. They don't want to make disciples. They don't want to win people to Jesus. They want to go to a church where I can just go for myself. Not at this church. Are you hearing me? Why? Because we want you to be free. The more you are about this yourself, the more you're a slave, the more you're in bondage. Bump your neighbor and say, you know what? The only problem you really have is you. Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, if it wasn't for you, you would be awesome. Because God made you awesome. While still in your mother's womb, He was dreaming about you. You are beautifully and wonderfully made. God formed you. God knew you. You see, but every t- everything you think you are, you try to be out of yourself, distorts the original uh, uh, image and purpose God had for your life. So if you just die to yourself and allow God to be God within your life, watch awesome. Watch now who is exceeding, who, who, can ex, who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above that which you might even ask or think. Amen. Amen. If you can think it, it's too low. I don't want what I can think. If I had to follow the life, I think I would never be where I am today. But I trust God. Every single day I trust God. He leads me, He guides me, and I trust His Word. And that's why you have people with these weird misinterpretations of what it really means and what love is. And, and then you get to 2 Timothy 3.7. The Bible says they're always learning, but they're never able to come to the knowledge of their truth. They're sitting every week in the church saying, Amen, Amen, Hallelujah. Mm, yo, that's awesome. Ah, mm, ah. But they, they, they're learning and learning and learning and learning, but they never come to understanding. Why? Because you never do the Bible. Is this helping somebody? Yeah. 1 Timothy 6.20, avoiding the profane and idle babblings and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. Sit and listen. Get your guidance from ungodly people who don't know God. Amen. Amen. And we call it knowledge. Wow. Just do what Jesus says. You're going to save so much money. Amen. 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 Are you hearing me? Amen. God defines love. God by nature is love. Therefore, He defines love. Listen to me. Love does not define him. Your definition of love doesn't define God. God says, I am love. Now let me show you my love. Let me show you what love truly means. But what we do is we say, "Mm, this is love. Yeah, that's why you're not married anymore. That's why you 
moving jobs every three years because it becomes a, it's a toxic environment, Pastor. You don't realize you're the toxic. Because every job you go through is toxic. Come on, somebody. Because we want to define, well, this is love. How do you know what love is? Based on what? On Opa and Granny? Or my culture, where I come from? That's not the definition of what love is. You want to know what love is? You've got to go to the Bible. Go find out what God says. Do what God says. And as you are obedient to the word, you start understanding, say, ah, this is what it means to love. See, now you can love your wife the way she deserves to be loved. Now you can love your husband the way he deserves to be loved. Now you can love your children the way they deserve to be loved. But now you've got your own definition of love. Oh, you grew up in a house and this is what love, how love was interpreted. And, then they, oh, and there's violence in the house and there's abuse in the life. And you think, oh, that's normal. All houses are like that. No, they're not. And you say, well, I'm going to be different. I'm not going to do it like that. You know, I'm not going to be like my parents. And then you get your own. It's not a godly definition, but now you have your own. No, no, I'm going to do the opposite. The opposite of what your parents is also not defined as love. Now you said what model for your kids? You said what model for your grandkids? Now we have abuse taking within our house. We have the husband beating the wife and, and you think it's normal. It's not normal. Emotional manipulation and abuse is not normal. Now you think, oh, that's what love is. Now this is how it is. And, and now you're getting to your own relationships and your own marriage and stuff and you want to apply what you know and you apply your culture. Seriously? Thank God He delivered me from my culture. Thank God I don't apply what I got from my grandparents and from my parents. Thank God I got saved that I don't have the same rubbish in my house. Where did I learn that? Through the Word. And through doing the Bible, I started understanding, ah, this is what love is. Now we grow up in those environments and we think, well, you know, it's, it's normal. Or at work, you know, this is normal. And you go on, it's, it's not normal. You're hurting people. You're destroying people. And you think, oh, this is what you do. Hey, you know, just, just, just work through it. it. It is what it is. No, it's not just what it is. God defines love. Who defines love? God, which means you need to discover what it is. That means every day in work, walking with God, you have a new revelation of who God is, the greater revelation of God, the greater revelation of love that you have within your life. Now you can love your wife. Now you can love your husband. Oh, we grow up. The art of manipulation. Well, that's what we do. That's what we do in households. That's, that's how it works. We go, or two brothers go behind, they go outside and two brothers, they beat it out and they whoop and then after, that's love. No, that's not love. Oh, no, that's normal because you grew up. No, that's not normal. Are you hearing me here today? God deliver you from your culture. People constantly impose on God a human view of love, but He transcends all human limitations. Amen. 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 Unlike emotional, physical, romantic, and friendship love, it's not. Godly love is not a romantic feeling 
It's not a friendship feeling. It's not, oh, I feel you, my brother. It's got nothing to do with that. A God by godly love is a self-sacrificing service. Amen. It's a love that you give to those in need of love, not necessarily because somebody did something for you or whatever, and you're obliged to love them because they're family. No, no, you love whether they're family, whether they're not family, you love irrespective. Can I get a big amen there? Yeah. So therefore, 1 John 4, sure, time. 1 John 4, verse 9. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. Look at verse 10. In this is love, not that we love God. It wasn't that we were loving Him, but He loved us and He sent His Son to be a propitiation for our sins. A propitiation means He sent Jesus to, to, to be the sacrificial atonement. In other words, instead of us being sacrificed, going to hell, He took the sacrifice. He became the sacrifice for us. Hallelujah. In other words, he paid the price. He took the brunt on himself. He took the debt. So it's like if someone owes 100,000. It's like saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to pay that for you. That's a propitiation. That's atonement. It's like, oh, he's got he's to go to jail for five years. Say, please, let me take his place. Let me take his place. That's godly love. Amen. You see, that he laid his life, he took it upon himself. He absorbed the sin of others upon his life. That's the love of God. And therefore he says in verse 11, Beloved, if God so loved us, we also or to do what? Love one another. Hallelujah. No one has seen God at any time. No one has seen God at any time. But if we love one another, God abides in us and His love has been perfected in us. So it's, we don't see God, but we see His love. Are you hearing me here today? And I'm, I'm skipping a whole bunch of things for time. And we have known, verse 16, and believe the love that God has in him. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God. And God abides in him. Amen. So the evidence that you're born again, that you have become the next generation of the begotten of God, the born of God, is shown in that you lay down your life and love others. And that's why verse 19 says, we loved Him. We love Him because He first loved us. Verse 20, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. Amen. Amen. You say you're a Christian and you sound all spiritual. You talk in tongues. And you prophesy. The Bible says, but if you don't love your brother, he says, you are a liar. Liar, liar, pants on fire. That's somewhere in the Bible. It says, and he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? You claim you love God. How, how, how does that work? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. 1 John 5 verse 1 to 5. I don't have time to read everything. He says, by this, verse 2, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep His commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments. What's His commandments? To love one another. And His commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that we has overcome the world. Our faith. Our faith. Are you blessed? Yes. You have the capacity. 
out of ourselves, we can't do it. Out of yourselves, you can't do it. Your perception of love is toxic. It's tainted. How do we know what love is? What does love look like? You've got to do Jesus to understand it. Amen. See, but then what that happens is as you receive Jesus Christ into your life, you have the capacity now to be able to give your life to others. Amen. Quickly stand to your feet just there where you are. Become aware of the presence of God in this place. The basis of loving others is the love of God in your life. The basis of being faithful is having a faithful God in your life. The basis of being able to give knowing that your sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Become aware of the presence of God. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Christ is my firm foundation. Yes. The rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken. I've never been more glad because I put my faith in Jesus.
Christ is your foundation. Amen. You can give. Amen. You can sow. Amen. You can be generous. Amen. You can give your time. You can give your resources. Because God's in control. Amen. You help other people, God helps you. Help other people's marriages, God blesses your marriage. Help other people with their children, God blesses your children. Help other people with their grandchildren, God blesses your grandchildren. You take responsibility for other households, God helps you with your household. See, that's just how love works. The love of God, having the heart of God. Like a South African taxi, there's always place for one more. One more person, one more family, one more neighborhood. Hallelujah. One more city, one more nation. Hallelujah. This 3C Live experience was brought to you by the 3C Media Production. For more information, Call us on 86 or log on to my3c.tv. Or you could write to us at P.O. Box 10508 Centurion 0046 or email us at tv at my3c.tv. If you need prayer, SMS the word PRAY followed by your prayer request to 33347 and our team of prayer warriors will pray for you for 30 days. If you would like to become a partner with the ministry, SMS the word PARTNER to 33347 and one of our team members will get back to you within the next few days. You can follow Pastors Bert and Shane Pretorius on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram to be inspired daily by morning devotions, ministry updates and much, much more. Log on to my3c.tv for more information.